What is going on guys? Nemesis here and in this video, as you can see, I have pushed past 3000 medals and I'm currently 438th in the world. Um and I've been using obviously Royal Giant. Um so the ladder push has been going pretty good and I just want to show you a few replays obviously. So it's against Pandora. Um He's a really solid player, obviously, top tier pro, um, just absolute legend at the game. Uh, so it's kind of like an RG mirror match. And I just want to show you how I played against it because like, I think it's really good to like learn how to play against it, especially because like a player of his caliber, um, you know, it's just good. So um, I think, okay. So yeah, he goes for a Royal Giant in the back first play. Obviously, it's a solid play. Um, not much else to really say about it. As you can see, though, I'm actually running the Heal Spirit. So I know that's a little strange because like no one runs Heal Spirit in RG anymore. You know, that's like three years ago. You know what I'm saying? So um, definitely having like Heal Spirit in RG is kind of strange, but... To be quite honest, it's been working out, so I can't complain at all, and it's actually better for me in this matchup than his Electro Spirit, so it kind of helps me in the long run, you know, against, you know, this kind of mirror match. So, um, like, low-key though, Heal Spirit is so good in RG, and, um, so, okay, he goes for this, like, Lumberjack RG right here, and right here, yeah, I go for the Heal Spirit, and check that out, bro, like, that is so clutch for me. Um, just kind of keeping my troops really healthy and stuff like that. So it's always super, super nice. You know, goes for this fisherman plus bar barrel. And right here, I recognize that he's like really low in elixir. So I go for an RG in the back opposite lane. So if he, for whatever reason, wanted to, you know, cycle back to another Royal Giant, I can fisherman opposite lane where my Royal Giant is. Um, I'll take like five, five, six shots of the RG, but I'll get a massive counter push. Um, so right here, you know, he does a good job by trying to like DPS down my Royal Giants as quick as possible, but I go for the, the almighty heal spirit, bro. It's so good. Like I'm telling you guys, <laughs> um, yeah, not much else to really say about it, man. Um, I think right here, I actually go for another like RG in the back. Yeah, he goes for a fisherman right there. So at this point, okay, I go for electro wizard at this point though, I was like, I was feeling myself a little bit because I knew that he was struggling because he was playing that fisherman, which was really bad for him. So I was kind of like, okay, yeah, I got this game in the bag. I think he's kind of done for. So I was getting really happy about it. Uh, but this part got a little scary, right? This part got a little sketchy. Like, um, yeah, this double Phoenix plus fisherman got really scary. I was like, okay, how the heck did this guy get two Phoenixes on the board? Like, it just blew my mind. I was like, wait, what did I do wrong? You know, I was like, no way I'm choking a big lead like this. So at this point, I was like, okay, you know what? Just take my tower. I had to go right back in with my Royal Giant right here. Um, so, and right here, I think I also take a Fireball. Yeah, so yeah, there's the Fireball, obviously. Um, looking back at, you know, this replay, I didn't need that Fireball. But in the, the heat of the moment... I was like, okay, it's better safe than sorry. Um, I just want to take the tower and just get it over with. So, you know, that was my thought process, pretty much. Um, and uh, it was really clutch for me to pull his Royal Giant onto my, you know, my King Tower. So, and look at that Heal Spirit yet again, just putting in so much work in this matchup. Like, I don't even know what to say. You know, Royal Giant the bridge because I have a little bit of a counter push. And he goes for a nice fireball right there, but my RG is getting a few shots. So it's always nice to see. Um, I think like right here, just overall in this area, I just kind of stack a whole bunch of troops in the middle just in case he wants to play RG so I could just like get instant damage on top of it and stuff like that. So that's why you always see me stacking like in the middle just in case. So yeah. Um, let's see here. Okay, Fisherman in the middle to pull his Fisherman right here. You know, at this point, like triple elixir happened. So I was like, okay, bro. There's so much going on at this point. I was like, okay, I'm just playing cards to play. Because there's so much going on. My brain can't process like how many phoenixes are on the map and stuff like that. And like, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm just playing. Um, this game's really close anyway. I was like, okay, what's going on? I'm just going to play things. <laughs> so 
that's what's kind of happening right here and i think at this point yeah i think that's when i thought i kind of lost here so what i had to do in this scenario was just who gets the tower first right who gets the tower first so that's why i played my royal giant to kind of try to take the tower first so you know and that's what happened so really really good game against pandora let's go for the next match Okay, so here's the next match, and it's against Beal. Um, I, I feel like I've played against this guy before. Um, he's obviously a really solid player too, but um, you know he's playing this mighty minor, you know minor poison deck and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure he's got mortar as well. I think. Yeah, there's the mortar like on his next card rotation. So, um, this matchup, I don't know exactly you know the ratio of the matchup. But I do know how to play the matchup, and basically what you gotta do is you just gotta wait until his Mighty Miner is out of rotation, so you can just spam Ghost plus RG at the bridge, and that's how you get like most of your. Di By the way, look at that! Did you see the Mighty Miner right there? I'm just gonna replay that because of how weird that was. Um, look at the Mighty Miner right here. Isn't that weird, bro? Like it made no sense, but um, yeah, I just found that really strange. But, you know, back to the matchup is I like to pressure a lot when his Mighty Miner is out of rotation. So by playing, you know, Ghost plus Royal Giant at the bridge when his, you know, Mighty Miner is out of rotation, it gets really awkward for the opponent to defend. Um, the only issue about playing against this deck is his Musketeers because I don't have Log. So I can't just like Fireball Log his Musketeers. Um, so I have literally no chance of killing his Musketeers on defense. So that's the only really awkward part about, you know, um, oh, I think right here I actually go in. You know, I actually did tell you obviously earlier that I only go in when his Mighty Miner's out of rotation. I'm only playing this RG because I have Electro Wizard in hand. So even if he Mighty Miner's, my E-Wiz is just going to get infinite value. So that's literally why I did that as well. So, you know, that is, there's another tip, I guess. You can just pressure when you have an E-Wiz in hand too or something, you know? Um... Yeah, that's basically game. It was just a really fast game. It's like really fast. He's kind of salty about it. Um, personally, it's a good matchup in single elixir, but I feel like in double, it gets really, really awkward and it gets kind of tricky because you can just musketeer stack. So um, not much else to really say about that. So let's go ahead and jump to the final game. Okay, so this is the final game here against uh, Memasos or something like that. I think that's how you say it. Um, he's playing, I think, in my opinion, a hard counter because he has Inferno Tower and I don't have any kind of resets besides, you know, the Electro Wizard. But obviously, Electro Wizard isn't guaranteed to hit the Inferno Tower, you know, so I don't really count that as a reset unless obviously you're playing against a person that just came out of Arena 1 and they just play like an Inferno Tower at the bridge or something, you know what I'm saying? Um, obviously, there's some instances where you need to do that, but... You, you know what I'm saying, right? Um, so right here, it was a little annoying because I cycled my... Actually, never mind. My ghost came back. For some reason, I was kind of thinking of another replay where I cycled a ghost and then this drill guy just put a drill as soon as I cycled ghost and just took free 1,000 damage. But, you know, my ghost came back right there. Um, against any kind of firecracker deck, though, I always try to get king activation just like that. I think it's always really important. Okay, and don't even, I'm sorry, that bar barrel was so bad. You know, sometimes I just click, I don't drag sometimes, I just click on the screen instead of dragging. So, um, sometimes I miss my troops or my card placements a lot, um, which I kind of need to fix, because if you're playing top ladder, you can't be messing stuff up like that. But, yeah, against Inferno Tower decks, the main thing I can tell you guys is just cycling RGs in the back. Um, when you have a good cycle, so um, if you have RG and you also have a ghost in hand, it's kind of safe play to play. Well, I'm talking more about this matchup in general though, because he has a drill. So you can RG the back in this matchup if you have a ghost in hand, because you have a really solid counter towards the drill. Um, but if he also has like evil firecracker in hand, you don't really want to RG the back because. If you RG the back and then he goes like drill and then like he could firecracker the bridge and then you can't really defend it because you just don't have that much elixir. So um, yeah, not much else to really say about that. Just cycling RGs in the back because he also has Inferno Tower. So 
you need to stack as many RGs as you can in this matchup to break through the Inferno Tower. Um, so that's why you see me doing that. I'm playing the RG's opposite lane of the weaker side tower too because I don't want you know the RG to kind of be in front of the weaker tower where he gets like firecracker value. So that's why and this guy's playing it at the bridge. But um, now that I think about it, I don't know why I didn't like e was that to be quite honest with you. But okay, look at these double firecrackers though, and look at that fireball value, bro. I think I just took a bar barrel here. Um. At this point, this guy is struggling, bro. This guy is absolutely struggling. This is what I was telling you guys about, just trying to stack as many RGs or just out-cycle his Inferno Tower in general. So that just kind of led me to a win. And I just play this here because I know he has kind of low elixir. And I think he Inferno Towers the bridge here, which is obviously, I mean, I don't really know what to say about it. You know, I was telling you guys that only people from Arena 1 do that, but he, it's probably a good play. You know, it's probably actually a good play. So, um... Yeah, not much else to really say about that. I played these matchups really well, obviously against really solid players, but um, I hope you gained some knowledge about you know how to play some matchups. So thank you guys so much for watching.